resuming debate. The Honourable Member for Don Valley West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I'm very pleased to rise in the House today in support of Bill uh, C-316, and I'm also proud to be one of its seconders. I want to begin by thanking and commending the member from Calgary Confederation for his work in preparing this bill and helping to do two things. One, to help Parliament and the government and Canadians who engage in a, an important conversation about organ doning, donating, and also to suggest a way to improve the lives of people so that more people can inherit that gift of life through organ transplants. This is no less than a matter of life and death. As the United Church of Canada minister, I've had the privilege to help families in the most difficult times of their lives. Those times have involved people who have lost loved ones, often tragically and unexpectedly, who were searching for solace and meaning in the face of often unspeakable grief. I've also worked with individuals waiting for life-saving or life-improving surgery that involved receiving an organ or tissue from either a living person or one who had just died but his organs could go on living in their body, giving them a second chance at living a full life. I do have a bias on this topic. I'm unabashedly in favour of finding ways to open the conversation about organ donation and finding ways to make it as easy as possible for this to happen across our country. An organ donation is called a gift of life. But for me, there are two gifts happening simultaneously. One, obviously, for the recipient, whose life may be well saved by the donation. But also, it's a gift for the donor and their family. In my experience, the donor and his or her family often receive as much or even more benefit from the organ donation. For the family, it often helps make sense and give meaning in the midst of tragic loss. I was 11 years old when Dr. Christian Barnard performed the world's first human-to-human -human heart transplant in Cape Town, South Africa. I can still remember watching the news that night and being absolutely overwhelmed at that possibility. He transplanted the heart of Denise Darvell, who had died from a head injury, into the chest of Louis Waskansky. While he only lived for 18 days following the surgery, he regained consciousness and taught his medical team important lessons about the immune system and anti-rejection drugs. His second patient, which happened 50 years ago this year, lived for 19 months and opened up the possibility for heart patients around the world to hope for a healthy, happy, full, and long life. We've come a long way since then. Modern medicine now allows for transplantation of organs, including the heart, kidneys, liver, lungs, pancreas, intestine, skin, and thymus. Tissues that may be transplanted include bones and tendons, muscles, corneas, heart valves, and veins. And medicine continues to grow and offer life-changing opportunities for people suffering from many afflictions. But to change these lives, it takes a willingness of people to donate their organs and tissue, and it takes systems that facilitate that in the most humane and efficient ways possible. This bill quite simply amends the Canada Revenue Agency Act to authorize the Canada Revenue Agency to enter into an agreement with a province or territory regarding the collection and disclosure of information required for establishing or maintaining an organ donor registry in that province or territory. During the other speeches, I actually double-checked. I first checked on my Ontario license to see if I was a donor, and it wasn't there. Then I checked on my health card, only because I was prompted when I got on the website for the Ontario government. And it's not an easy process. An easier process is when we're filing our income tax to check a box. It is not difficult. Our government recognizes the value of organ and tissue donation and transplantation, establishing leading practices, strengthening professional education, raising awareness. We've invested money with the Canada, Canadian Blood Services and in research as well, but more can be done. And this is quite a simple way to expand the gift of life to get better health outcomes. I encourage all members in the House to support sending this bill to committee where it can be, both be studied and perhaps even improved. My hope is that the committee will recognize that provinces and territories could use help to register consent for organ and tissue donation, especially that organ and tissue donation after death, post-mortem, at a time when it's easy to do 
And believe it or not, doing your taxes is not that hard. It's not that stressful. So we can take that moment in the time where we're filing to take just a second to check the box and do it. But being the kind of person I am, I want to push even a little bit further to say, is that the only place the federal government can help? Perhaps the committee could consider all the aspects of our Service Canada encounters Canadians. Getting a passport, which surely is less stressful than filing our income taxes. The committee has some work to do on this bill. I support it fully, and I suspect that we will be able to find a way for the federal government to efficiently, humanely help people to make this decision in a timely way. Ensuring that we register advanced directives is critical. And it's one way to relieve the pressure on a family. If you've been in an emergency room, when a family is dealing with a life and death situation, when someone has been brought in after a car accident, and the family is told at that moment that the person they perhaps love the most in the world is dead or is about to die, and they're being asked to give permission for organ donation, it's a confusing time. As a pastor, I've often stepped in to help them when physicians or nurses are trying to remain neutral. Because my job as a pastor is to help them deal with that death, and I know that one way to deal with that death is to make sure that life comes out of darkness and death. And that's the way we can do it, by helping a family. But if we can avoid having to do it at that time of urgent care, at that time in a hospital when someone has died and someone is facing a tragic decision, then we should do it. It's a matter of life and death, and we have the power. We don't often in this House get to save lives. We're not first responders. But in this bill, we have the chance to save lives, and we should take it. Ensuring that there is a safe, good, and efficient way to register advanced directives is part of our mandate as members of this House of Commons, and this bill accomplishes that. We all have stories about this, and a couple of years ago, I read a story that came out of a shooting in one of the schools in a wave of violence. And this particular story happened in Paducah, Kentucky. Several children died in a school shooting. Afterwards, a reporter asked the mother of one of the little girls who had been shot what her thoughts had been as she raced to the hospital. She said she kept praying over and over again, Lord, let my daughter live. The reporter continued, and what happened when you found out your daughter was dead? The mother responded, I started praying they would be able to use her organs so that others could live. And indeed that came about, and what happened was that this little girl's heart was given to a man who desperately needed a transplant. Months later, she went to see him. The mother was introduced to the man, and she asked for one thing, and that was that could she put her head against his chest to hear her heart beating again. This act was a gift to both families. It was a gift to a mother who had lost a daughter and a gift to a man who had new life. A little girl's heart beating and beating and beating. In this House, we have a chance to make that kind of a difference. We can send this bill to committee, we can make sure it gets passed, and we can save a life. Thank you. Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Kim